Welcome back to my channel. I am back today with my contour and highlight routine. Feeling artsy as f As you may have guessed, this is my first Halloween look of the year. I am obsessed with American Horror Story at the moment. I have been binge watching every single season. I am currently on season four, Freak Show, and I have two episodes left. Another fun fact is that I am fucking terrified of clowns, so I've decided to face my fears today and turn myself into one. I didn't know what type of clown I would be, to be honest. It's not a question that I've really had to face throughout my life. When it comes to Halloween and most things, I like to pull inspiration from paintings or nature. I think I've spoken about this in a previous video. When I was researching what type of clown I should be, I started googling clown paintings, oil paintings, paintings of clowns, and this one in particular really stuck out to me and it was burned in my brain. I think it would be really cool if we could find the artist that painted this and show them my video because they have inspired me so much and have helped me conquer my fear of being a clown. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's never easy turning yourself into a painting, but I think I did okay. It took me a while, but I got into my special effects kit and it just reminded me of how much I love being a makeup artist and creating. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. It's pretty uh, intense. Basically, don't let anybody try to suck face with you or touch you and you're golden. Although I'm sure it will be very difficult to keep people away from you looking like this. This makeup makes my teeth look like corn. So yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. I know it's a little bit artsy fartsy, but sometimes makeup artists have to get in touch with their artsy fartsy side to get re-inspired. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. All of the products that I use will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Can I bum a light? Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of spirit gum with a clean spoolie and I'm just going to slick down the ends of my brows and I'm doing this only to the ends because that's the area of the brow that I'm going to need to pretty much reshape and extend. You can do this with a glue stick, I just didn't have one on hand. I'm then taking a little bit of eyelash glue, you can use latex if you have it, and I'm just going to stipple it over top of the spirit gum to seal it and also to reduce that hair-like texture. Then to remove the tackiness from the glue, I'm powdering everything with a translucent powder and I'm doing this twice over. Next, I'm priming my face with a Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and I'm starting to paint my face with a mixture of the MAC Mixing Medium in white and the Ben Nye Cream Stick in white. The reason I'm using Smashbox Primer in particular is because it is silicone based, which helps really heavy stage makeup apply more smoothly rather than skidding across the skin harshly, if you know what I mean. Once I have the right opacity, I'm gonna set the whole thing with my Ben Nye Pro Powder in super white. Now I'm basically going to shade in the primer of my face to give it the same sort of shape as the clown in the painting. Her face is really long and really slender with a super defined jawline. Achieving this structure is damn near impossible because it's such a unique face shape, but hey, a girl's got to try. So I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever Flash Palette in this tutorial, but for this step in particular, for some reason I decided to use my Ben Nye Rubber Mask Grease Paint. I think I did this because it's way more pigmented and it applies more smoothly over a powdered base. And then with a smaller brush, I'm alternating between the white and the black paint and I'm just shading in the areas that I feel need a little bit more dimension and this is what's going to bring the face to life. Sort of. Next I'm going to shape my eyebrows following the same pattern as the painting and I'm just sort of extending them up and out and then filling them in messily. I tried really hard to make this part look super messy and crazy like hers but I think they turned out not bad and I blame the crazy brow lady inside me. I'm kind of getting samurai vibes from these eyebrows, what do you guys think? 
Does anybody remember the show Samurai Pizza Cats or am I just old as fuck? Now I'm gonna start shading in the side of my nose and my camera decided to stop recording the part where I colored in my nose. But if you take a look at the painting, you can get a good idea of what I did there. I just used a little bit of red and a little bit of peach from my flash palette and just sort of filled in the tip. Her nose is pretty long and slender and tiny and her tip extends all the way to the top of her lip. Mine does not, so I just kind of had to work with what I had. And then I'm going to start brushing on random red bits on my chin and my cheeks and I'm using a few different methods for this. I think the part on the chin is supposed to look like smeared lipstick and the part on the cheeks is supposed to look like really messy blush. I'm using random brushes and random brush strokes as well as ripped off pieces of sponge. The technique I'm doing with the sponge is normally how you would achieve realistic looking road rash when you're doing TV and film makeup. On the left side of my cheek, you'll notice that I'm sort of filling it in with a little bit of gray and this is going to give it some dimension before I apply the red flush over top because I noticed that she had that in the painting so I wanted to mimic that on my own cheek. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to my nose and pretty much any time I want to clean something up on my face, you'll notice me going back in with white paint. It's basically like white out for the face. If you feel like you need to add something or remove something, you just cover it with white. Works pretty good. So back to the left cheek, like I said, she's got a little bit of dimension going on there. So I'm just going to mimic that and apply the red in the same type of manner. When I tell you guys that I'm deathly afraid of clowns, I'm not even playing. I'm like that unhealthy afraid of clowns, where if I see one, I will run the opposite direction, and if it fucks with me, I'll threaten to punch it in the face, basically. Like, it's no joke. It's no yoke. So, I had to grow a huge set of balls to be able to film this, and by the time I was done filming, it was 2 in the morning, and I could barely stand the sight of myself in my reflection in my bathroom, so... Imagine what a fun time I had removing this makeup without being able to look at myself. The struggle is real, y'all. This is the part that I think sort of pulls the whole look together, I guess you could say. And I'm using the black in my flash palette to achieve this. I'm just starting to messily, yet strategically, fill the area around my eyes to match hers. Just doing random ass brush strokes, which was actually really fun. This part gave me major, major black swan vibes. What do you guys think? She has pretty large, big blue eyes, and my eyes are pretty much the same shade as hers, and my pupils can get really large. Everyone always thought I was baked growing up because my pupils get really, really huge, but when the ring light hits my pupils, it dilates them, so you don't get the full effect in this video. I would recommend either getting big blue contact lenses for this, or, I don't know, smoking a bowl, whatever floats your boat, man. Once I feel like I've matched it to the painting to the best of my ability, I'm going to take some of the white from the flash palette and I'm just going to run it along my waterline to enlarge my eyeballs like hers. And just as an FYI, this was not irritating on my eyes at all, but use this method at your discretion. You can always use a white eyeliner if that's more comfortable for you. Once I've got my eye makeup placement sorted, I'm going to go over the black areas on my lids with some black eyeshadow and then just sort of tweak the shape of the eyes with some white paint. And then I'm going to throw on some falsies on my top lashes and I'll list the style that I'm using in the description box below. And while I enjoyed how the black looked along my bottom lash line, and I'm sure I could have painted on really long false eyelashes that she's rocking in the painting, I wanted to bring this face to life and add some dimension. So I took a pair of red cherry lashes and I chopped them up into little chunky sections. And then I glued them along my bottom lash line, super spaced out to sort of give them the same effect as the painting. And I absolutely love the way that this turned out, I really think it pulled everything together. So if you're gonna recreate this, I would highly recommend doing that to the bottom lash line. Next, I'm moving on to the lips and I'm just gonna do your typical clowny lip shape, emphasizing the top lips and the bottom of my bottom lip. I did these lips five fucking times before I was happy with them. I used so many different products and I did so many different shapes until I just couldn't take it anymore. 
and I ended up just using the red in my flash palette and then outlining the lips with Night Moth by MAC. I don't know what my problem was, I just couldn't get them right. I actually ended up going back in for like the sixth time after I finished filming and reshaped the lips a little bit for my thumbnail to match it closer to the painting, so obviously someone's got problems. I'm also adding a little bit of shadowing and shading around the lip area. So around the chin and the cupid's bow, and this again is going to add a little bit more dimension. Okay, now on to the DIY portion of this video. We're about to get real Martha Stewart up in this bitch, so I've created a few props. I found this little top hat at the dollar store, and it wasn't to my liking, so I tweaked it a little bit. I've actually gone to the dollar store since I filmed this, and I found the perfect little black top hat, but I filmed this over a week ago, so it's a little bit too late. Anyway, I ripped off all the really super foo-foo pieces of the hat, and I took a bit of this black acrylic paint that I had lying around from my airbrushing days and I just went to town on it. I painted it as black as I could. I also picked up a feather boa from the dollar store and I think it was like a dollar or two. I ripped it apart and I just started glue gunning little bits around the brim of the hat because that's what she was rocking in the painting so I had to have it too. And then I let that set overnight and went back in with more paint the next day. Also from the dollar store, I picked up this bouquet of fake black roses and I just tore off some of the leaves as well as some of the buds and I pulled them apart until I felt that they were the right size and I just glued them on the front of the hat. I think I ended up using three leaves or four leaves and two roses. Now, on to the most time-consuming part of this entire look, the damn collar. I failed like twice before I figured out the proper way to make a clown collar, and I totally MacGyvered this whole situation. So she has a really long-ass clown collar, which I'm sure if you really dug through the interwebs, you could find on like Etsy or something like that, but we ain't got that kind of time around here, so I grabbed this project by the balls and I made my own. I got this wired ribbon from Michaels and I started folding it accordion style in sections. And to make sure that each fold was equal, I cut up an old concealer box and I used it as a guide. You can totally use a ruler if you have one small enough, but I couldn't find one that was the perfect size and would give me the desired effect. This worked perfectly for me, I would highly recommend it. So I did this in two sections because I was kind of just winging it, but you can try to do it all in one giant piece if you want. You're going to glue each segment of the accordion together on the side of the collar that's going to be pressed up against your neck. And this is what will hold the collar together and give you that fanned effect and keep it in place. To get the end of this collar to look super cute and loopy rather than sharp and triangular and jagged, you're going to take a makeup brush or something that resembles a makeup brush and you're going to wrap each little segment around it and sort of mold the shape that you want. Because the ribbon is wired, each loop will stay in place, which is super cool. So make sure when you purchase a ribbon to do this, this, the ribbon has wire in it because it will stay in place and mold in the shape that you wanted, if that makes sense. Now I'm just gluing the two pieces together to make one giant collar. And to keep this around my neck, I'm just gonna glue a piece of elastic to one side, and I already measured the elastic to my neck, so I would suggest doing that first. And I'll be putting a safety pin on the other side, which you'll see in a sec. And lastly, I'm just gonna cover up that center part with a little bit more ribbon for aesthetic purposes, because I want it to look nice and pretty. I have no idea how DIYers have the patience to describe the shit that they're doing perfectly, and I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but if I'm not, then you can totally follow along with what I'm doing. I feel like visually it makes sense. For my hair, I left that shit unwashed for like a solid four or five days and I went ham and cheese with the backcombing. I backcombed the absolute shit out of it. So I started off in small sections, backcombed it, and then hairsprayed it as desired. Once you get everything backcombed, you can do pigtails if you want, you can pull it back into a messy bun if you want. I decided to just pull the front pieces back and pin them, kind of like a half up, half down pony, minus the pony. And after I did this, I put in my cute little top hat, 
which is dope by the way because it has two little clips on the bottom which makes placing it super easy. And before I put my collar on, I'm painting the rest of my neck black with my flash palette. I would recommend maybe setting this with a black eyeshadow or some type of black powder. I didn't because I knew I was showering right after. If you powder it, it'll definitely help with the transfer. I would probably recommend wearing some type of turtleneck with this to save yourself the hassle. I didn't have one, so I wore a long black sleeve shirt, which worked out just fine. So now I'm just popping out my collar that I slaved over. And as you can see, I'm safety pinning it in place. And I'm just going to style my hair a little bit more to cover up the sides of the collar so you can't see the pin or the elastic. And there you have it, my first Halloween look of the year. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I'm glad that I pulled in from a painting because I think it made this video very unique and that's exactly what I was going for. I have since found the artist responsible for the painting and I've reached out to her so if you guys follow me on Instagram and you see me tag her make sure to check out her page and let her know that she has inspired me to bring her character to life. If you guys enjoyed this video please give it some love. Thank you guys very much for watching, thank you for subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye!